Circuit satisfiability, a first MP-complete problem. Our definition of the MP-completeness has very, some very nice properties. But before we get too carried away in thinking about this notion, we should stop to notice something. It is not at all obvious that MP-complete problems should even exist. Why couldn't there exist two incomparable problems x prime and x prime prime so that there is no x in MP? With the property that x prime is polynomial reducible to x and x prime prime is polynomial reducible to x. Why wouldn't there exist an infinite sequence of problems x1, x2, x3, and so on in MP, each strictly harder than the previous one? To prove a problem is MP complete, one must show how it could encode any problem in MP. This is a much trickier matter than what we encountered in sections 8.1 and 8.2, where we sought to encode specific individual problems in terms of others. In 1971, Cook and Levin independently showed how to do this for every natural problem in MP. Maybe the most natural problem choice for a first MP complete problem is the following circuit satisfiability problem. To, spe to specify, to specify, this, specify problem, this problem, we need to make precise what we mean by a circuit. Consider the standard Boolean operators that we used to define the satisfiability problem. And, or, and not. Our definition of a circuit is designed to represent a physical circuit built out of gates that implement these operators. Thus, we define a circuit K to be a labeled, directed acyclic graph, such as the one shown in the example of figure 8.4. The sources in K, the nodes with no incoming agencies, are labeled either with one of the constants 0 or 1, or with the name of a distinct variable. The nodes of the later type will be prefer referred to as uh, the inputs to the circuit. Every other node is labeled with one of the Boolean operators and, or, or not. Nodes labeled with the and, or, or will have two incoming agencies, and nodes labeled with not will have one incoming age. There is a single node with no outgoing agencies, and it will represent the output, the result that is uh, computed by the circuit. The circuit computes a function of its inputs in the following natural way. We imagine the agencies as wires that carry the zero one value at the node they emanate from. Each node V other than the sources will take the values on its incoming agencies and apply the Boolean operator that labels it. The result of this and or or not operation will be passed along the agencies leaving V. The overall value computed by the circuit will be the value computed at the output node. For example, now the circuit the circuit. problem is the following. We are given a circuit as input and we need to decide whether there is an assignment of values to the inputs that causes the output to take the value 1. If so, we will say that the given circuit is satisfiable, and a satisfying assignment is one that results in an output of 1. In our example, we have just seen via the assignment 1, 0, 1 to the inputs that the circuit in figure 8.4 is satisfiable. We can view the theorem of Cook and Levin as saying the following. 8.13 Circuit satisfiability is MP-complete. As discussed above, the proof of 8.13 requires that we consider an arbitrary problem x in MP and show that x, which is polynomial reducible, to circuit satisfiability. We won't describe the proof of 8.13 in full detail, but it is actually not so hard to follow the basic idea that underlies it. We use the fact that any algorithm that takes a fixed number n of bits as input and uh, produces a yes-no answer can be represented by a circuit of the type we have just defined. This circuit is equivalent to the algorithm in the sense that its output is 1 on um, precisely the inputs for which the algorithm outputs yes. Moreover, if uh, the algorithm takes a number of steps that is a polynomial in n, then the circuit has polynomial size. 
does the transformation from an algorithm to a circuit is the part of the proof of 8.13 that we won't go into here, though it is quite natural given the fact that algorithms implemented on physical computers can be reduced to their operations on an underlying set of AND, OR, and NOT gates. Note that fixing the number of input bits is important since it reflects a basic distinction between algorithms and circuits. An algorithm typically has no trouble dealing with the different inputs of varying lengths, but a circuit is structurally hard-coded with the size of the input. How should we use this relationship between algorithms and circuits? We are trying to show that x, which is a polynomial reducible to circuit satisfiability, that is, given an input s, we want to decide whether s is in x using a black box that can solve instances of circuit satisfiability. Now, all we know about x is that it has an efficient certifier b, so to determine whether s is in x for some specific input s of length n, we need to answer the following question. Is there a t of length p of n so that b of s t is equal to yes? We will answer this question by appealing to a black box for circuit satisfiability as follows. Since we only care about the answer for a specific input s, we view b as an algorithm of n plus p of n bits, the input s and the, the certificate t, and we convert it to a polynomial size circuit k with n plus p of n sources. The first n sources will be hard-coded with the values of the bits in S, and uh, the remaining p of n sources will be labeled with the variables uh, representing the bits of t. These latter sources will be the inputs to k. Now we simply observe that S in X, even only if there is a way to set the input bits to k so that the circuit procedures produces an output of 1. In other words, if and only if k is satisfiable. The, this establishes that x is polynomial time reducible to circuit satisfiability and it completes the proof of uh, 8.13. An example. To get a better sense for what's uh, going on in the proof of 8.13, we consider a simple concrete example. Suppose we have the following problem. Given a graph G, does it contain a two-node independent set? Note that this problem belongs to MP. Let's see how an instance of uh, this problem can be solved by constructing an equivalent instance of circuit satisfiability. Following the proof outlined above, we first consider an efficient certifier for this problem. The input S is a graph on n nodes, which will be specified by n choose two bits. For each pair of nodes, there will be a bit saying whether there is an edge joining this pair. The certificate T can be specified by n bits. For each node, there will be a bit saying whether this node belongs to the proposed independent set. The efficient certifier now needs to check two things. That at least two of the bits in T are set to 1, and that no two bits in T are both set to 1 if they form the two ends of an edge as determined by the corresponding bit in S. Now for the specific input length n corresponding to the S that we are interested in, we constructed an equivalent circuit K. Suppose, for example, that we are interested in deciding the answer to this problem for a graph G on the three nodes U, V, W, in which uh, V is uh, joined to both u and w. This means that we are concerned with an input of length n equals to 3. 
figure 8.5 shows a circuit that is equivalent to an efficient certifier for our problem on arbitrary three node graphs. Essentially, the right hand side of the circuit checks that at least two nodes have uh, been selected, and the left hand side checks that we haven't selected uh, both ends of any edge. We encode the edges of G as uh, constants in the first three sources, and we leave uh, the remaining three sources representing the choice of nodes to put in the independent set as variables. Now observe that this instance of circuit satisfiability is satisfiable by the assignment 1, 0, 1 to the inputs. This uh, corresponds to choosing nodes U and W, which indeed form a two-node independent set in our three-node graph G. Proving further problems, MP complete.